This is Sparta! Hey there, it's Gloria with Warrior Yoga. I'm doing another intro to yoga video. This one will be kneeling poses. So I've already gone through Sun Salutation A, Sun Salutation B, and intro to seated base poses. So this one, most of them will be done on the knees. This will be a pretty short little class and uh, we'll just hold the poses for a couple of breaths to get your body used to the feel of them. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different with this video. I've noticed on my videos that um, looks really bright. So I'm trying it without the light. I hope it turns out okay. <laughs> so um, we'll just go ahead and get started and come to prayer. And uh, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this time on our mats. I pray that you hurt. I pray that you heal those who are hurt and sick. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. All right. So we're just going to sit here for a minute and get the Ujjayi breath started. Come into Sukhasana, easy pose. It's a cross-legged position. Sit up tall, shoulders back, shoulders over hips. And remember in the Ujjayi breath, breathe in and expand the belly. Breathe out, pull the belly button in towards the spine and lift the pelvic floor. I know I have a lot of um, older ladies following. Um, I know I've got a lot of beginners following, so I try to make it clear that the Ujjayi breath is a very important part. And lifting the pelvic floor, um, you wouldn't think of it as a you know part of exercise, but it really is, uh, especially as women, as we age, we lose um, our strength and the retention of urine, um, like if you sneeze, you pee a little bit. Um, this really helps. Lifting the pelvic floor and holding for a few breaths and then releasing, it helps so much. And with younger people, um, when you're getting ready to have a baby, it helps with um, pushing the baby out. I mean, it just helps all around. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is come into a tabletop position. This is Barmanasana. Barmanasana, tabletop. Your hips are over your knees. Your shoulders are over your hands. Your stomach is pulled in tight, pelvic floor lifted. And this pose usually is um, a pose you use to enter another pose, such as down dog, cat cow, thread the needle. So. This is just table, like I said. From here, we're going to do um, some cat cows, which is, uh, cat is bitilasana, and cow is marijiasana. So this would be cow. When you come to cow, you drop your belly towards the floor, sticking your tailbone up towards the ceiling, open up the chest, pull the head back, and just get a, a deep bow in the belly. Try to get that belly hanging as far towards the floor as you can. So this is cow. This is Margiasana. Now we're going to do cat, which is Bidilasana. And if you think of a cat that's scared, all it does is hunch its back up. So you're going to do the exact opposite. You're going to push your hands down into the floor, separating the shoulder blades tucking the pelvis under, still pull the navel in the, into the spine and lift the pelvic floor. You can even push into the tops of the feet to really get a lift out of this. So a lot of times in um, our asanas, in the beginning workouts, we'll do cat-cow. So you come to cat, cow. Breathe in, cow. Breathe out, cat. And we usually do this at the beginning of a warm up um, workout for a w spinal warm up. So we'll just do a few of these and these feel really good. I 
Okay, so from here, we're going to do what's called thread the needle. And I'm not even going to attempt to say the Sanskrit name. <laughs> so what we're going to do is take our left hand, keep the right hand grounded, lift the left hand up towards the sky, opening up the chest, keep the hips squared, push into those feet, and then you're just going to thread, like right in between the thigh and the arm, you're just going to thread like you're threading a needle. And twist the torso, come onto that left shoulder, lay the ear down, lay the hand down, and just hold, push into that right hand to get a little bit deeper of a twist. So this is thread the needle. And just breathe. Pull the belly in, lift the pelvic floor. All right, so to come out, we usually push into that right hand, lift the left hand up towards the ceiling, and drop the left hand back down. So I'm going to attempt the Sanskrit name. It's Urdhva Mukha Pasasana. <laughs> so thread the needle in English. <laughs> All right, so the next we'll just do the other side. We always want to do both sides in yoga. So we're going to inhale and lift that right arm up, opening up the chest, and then exhale, thread the hand through between the thigh and the left arm coming onto the outside of that right shoulder. You should feel a stretch in the back uh, side of your scapula. I'm really feeling it right now because I've done all those down dogs we did for the sun salutations, not the down dogs, but the um, chaturangas. Those are really good up back strengtheners. So this is a twist and a um, shoulder opener, a backside shoulder opener. So inhale, bring that arm back up. Exhale, bring it down. Now the next thing we're going to do, you're going to bring your thighs together and just sit back onto the feet. And this pose is uh, a lot of times just a beginning pose. If Sukhasana, the cross-legged position, is uncomfortable for you like it is for me because of my knee, this is one option that you can try for um, your beginning pose to get your breath started. And this is a Thunderbolt, thunderbolt pose um, or Vaj, Vajrasana. Vajrasana. <laughs> I'm still learning the Sanskrit pose names myself. So just sit here. This is very good for a stretch in the uh, front side of the uh, bottom legs. It's very good to strengthen the back because you're sitting so tall. Pull the belly in. Lift the pelvic floor. Constrict the back of the throat on the breath out. Now from here, I'll show you Varasana, which is hero pose. So I'm going to come up onto the knees, keep the knees together, and I'm going to separate the feet just slightly. Now, some people may not need to do this. My calves are, I guess, on the bigger side. So I'm just going to push the calves out of the way and sit down in between the feet. So the tops of the feet are to the floor. Um, pulled into as close as you can to the legs and you're sitting up tall. This is a very good stretch for the outside of the knees, uh, which most of us never do. So if this is uncomfortable, you can always sit on a block or a blanket and start here. And as you get a little more limber in your knees, especially if you, you're suffering from arthritis, um, it's always good to start out on a block. So <clears throat> this is Varasana or hero pose. And then a lot of times what we do 
I'll turn this way to show you in Varasana. The yoga teacher, whoever's teaching the class, will say, let's go a little bit deeper and we'll come into supta varasana. Supta meaning lay down. So reclined varasana. So you're going to kind of push your um, tailbone out a little bit and you'll feel a stretch in the front parts of the thighs. And just kind of lean back. And you should just try to come down onto the elbows. And if that feels okay, you want to keep the knees together and the knees, the thighs tight. If that feels okay, you can come on down to your back and just hold. This is somewhat of a back bend, a slight back bend, so you may feel a little strain in your lower back. But any of these poses, if you feel ever feel a sharp pain, you always want to come out of it. You never want to feel pain. You want to feel a little bit of resistance and a stretch. Um, but any sharp pain, you definitely want to stay away from. So to come out of this, we're just going to kind of shimmy the elbows up, push up onto the elbows, and then take one hand down, the other hand down, and just push yourself up. So the next pose we're going to do is called camel. So we're going to come onto the knees. Um, a good way, well, I'm going to stretch my feet out a little bit after that. So that's a good um, Achilles stretch and calf stretch here. Get some blood flow back into the legs after that. All right, so... This next one is a back bend, and it's always good starting out to get the feel of what you're supposed to be doing in camel is to put a block in between your legs and squeeze. So you're squeezing your legs together. So from here, and this is about where you need to be, your hips, your knees to be, need to be hip width apart. The tops of the feet are to the floor. But you may need to start with your toes folded under if you're going to actually start to go back. And I'll show you that. So to just start off, you're squeezing that block. Put your hands on your low back, right above over on your sacrum, and just start to push the pelvis forward, opening up the chest, looking back. And if that's all you feel like you can do, um, if you're a beginner, that will probably be about all you can do. But if you want to go ahead and try, you can do reach one hand down towards the heel, lift the other hand down towards the heel, and really push that pelvis forward. So then, if that's um, okay for you, you can come all the way down. And this is camel pose, ustrasana, or camel pose. This is a pretty deep back bend, and you don't want to relax into it. You want to be pushing forward. It's a good chest opener. Now to come up out of it, you can put your one hand on your lower back, bring the other hand and then just set the hips back down. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're going to do is very simple. It's called child's pose. This is one of my favorite relaxation poses. So <clears throat> there's a few different ways you can take child's pose. Some people like to do it with the knees together, sitting on the feet, and just bring the arms out and the head down. You can do it this way and release the arms back if you've done a lot of arm workouts. But my favorite way to do it, and the way I've learned mostly, is to take the knees, spread them apart about mat distance, and your toes are making um, like a pyramid shape. So your toes are touching in the back, and then you walk the hands out. 
and push that chest down towards the floor. And you can turn the head to one side. And then really push that pelvis down towards the heels. And push the shoulders, the underneath side, the underarms towards the floor. To me, that's a, just a very relaxing pose. And it's um, a lot of times after we do an asana, we'll come into child's pose for a rest before we move on. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is gate pose. So I'm going to come up onto the knees. And we'll do the right leg first. So the left leg is going to stay where it's at. Now I'm just going to extend the right leg out the foot down towards the floor. Now your pelvis is um, squared off over the knee. You're going to reach the left arm up and side bend over towards your left leg for a really good stretch down your left side. This is gate pose. I'm not sure the Sanskrit pose, Parijyasana. So a lot of times we'll do Queen's gate and we'll say, swing that left arm around, reach back for the left foot, open up, and then you just rotate back around. Let's just hold that for a little side stretch. Now, come out of it, bring that right leg in, Extend the left leg out, and we just do the other side. Inhale the right arm up, side bend. Now reach back for Queen's Gate. Come back to gate. And these are usually breath to movement. So to come out of that one, we'll do a very, very popular um, pose that usually is the starting of the standing poses. It's called Anjaneyasana or low lunge. So I'm just going to bring, usually you come into it from down dog. So from down dog here. I'm gonna step my right foot forward in between my hands and lower my left knee. So you can be here or you can be here. A lot of times we'll just stay here for a stretch. Sometimes we'll bind the left foot in for a quad stretch. But this is what we'll call low lunge or anjaneyasana so just stay here and if your knee gives you a little trouble here you can always uh, fold the mat over like that i'm on concrete so it's not very comfortable or you can put a small pillow or a rag underneath your knee All right, so I'm going to bring my right leg back in line with my left, and I'm just going to step my left foot forward and sink down for that low lunge. I'm going to push out of that and we'll do one more pose. So I'm bringing the knees back together. Um, they'll be about hip distance like they were in camel. 
So from here, I'm just gonna bring the hands down, start to walk them out. See, my knees are around the middle of the mat, maybe a little bit um, less than the middle towards the back. So I'm gonna bring the hands out towards the front of the mat and about just as wide. And then I'm just gonna drop the belly and the chest down, face or chin. This is a very good shoulder stretch, chest opener. And this is puppy pose. Just a little um, thought of how much yoga has helped me. I had um, shoulder stability problems. Um, my shoulder would pop out of place. And even when I done this, did this pose, uh, it would hurt, it would pop. Um, but after I practiced yoga for a while, it uh, went away. Yoga is the best form of physical therapy there is. All right, so inhale, just come on up. You can just push yourself forward a little, and bring the knees in. All right, that concludes intro to yoga, kneeling poses. I hope you learned a lot today. Namaste, stay strong, warriors. This is Sparta!